you have your Bibles this morning, we'd like to ask you to please turn to the book of Ephesians. We'd like to read from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 21. In the midst of all that's going on around us today, especially with the with the virus and uh, the rioting and the loot, looting and the turmoil in our government and all the different things that are happening, the only way that a child of God can feel peace is if God manifests himself to them and they're able to have peace in their soul no matter how dark the days get. No matter how big the problems are, we can rejoice and be happy every day of our lives. And I pray that God will help us to understand that it's wrong for us to be discouraged and despondent and depressed. That we have every reason in the world to have joy in our soul. And the Word of God describes in this passage of Scripture... The Word of God describes what we can do, and this will guarantee that we will have great joy and peace in our soul. It's very simple. There are only three particular things that are mentioned here, and I pray that God will help every one of us that we would begin to work diligently that these three things will be present in our lives, they will be manifest in our lives, that every day... But we would work to have these three things in our lives, that we would do the three things that God is telling us to do in this passage of Scripture so that we can feel the peace of God that passeth all understanding. I heard two, two people yesterday, and they were fretting. They said there's two major hurricanes coming, and it's going to hit the United States all at one time, and there may just be major destruction all over uh, the South. It's amazing to me, brethren, that uh, we pay more attention to the weatherman than we do the Word of God. And I ask all of you to pray that God will help us, that we would stop spreading things that cause terror in the minds of God's people. We need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We need to pray that God will give us wisdom and that God will guide us and direct us in all that we do and say. Reading now from Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 18, the Word of God says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Everybody hear that? Be filled with the Spirit. Now that's talking about being filled with the Spirit of God. Not being filled with the Spirit of fear. That's the opposite of being filled with the Spirit of God. When you're filled with the Spirit of God, you have the Spirit of power, the Spirit of love, and of a sound mind. But when you don't have the Spirit of God, when you're not filled with the Spirit of God, you're going to be filled with fear every day of your life. You're going to be worried about one thing after another. As soon as one thing is gone, then the devil's going to put something else in your mind to worry about. Then when that's over, then he's going to put something else in your mind. And you're going to spend all of your life just worrying about one thing after another. Jesus commanded us that we're not to be anxious. We're not to be worrying. And so the Word of God tells us here that we are not to be drunk with wine. That's what some people do when they see all the problems around them. They begin to take drugs and they take alcohol, which is a drug. They begin to drink. They get drunk with wine to try to hide from all the troubles of life. That doesn't accomplish a thing in the world. So God says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of God. And there's not a period there, there's a colon there. And then he tells you the three things to do in order to be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19 says, speaking to yourselves... In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's the first thing. Second thing is in verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the third thing is mentioned in verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. This morning I want us to just concentrate on verse 19. Where the word of God after it tells us to be filled with the spirit of God. It says speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now last week I read James 5.13 which says as any merry let him what? Sing psalms. If you're happy sing psalms. However the word of God also makes it plain if you're sad fill in the next two words. Sing psalms. The word of God makes it very plain that David especially he often speaks about the songs of the night. You know what that means? Songs of the night. He's talking about the times at night that he couldn't sleep. He was, he was burdened about one thing after another. And so he needed those songs of the night is the way he expressed it. Songs of the night. Songs that you might sing in the middle of darkness and trouble. You ought to have a number of songs on your heart that you know by heart. And you sing those songs. If you're going to be filled with the Spirit of God, you need to have singing in your heart. If you want to drive away the devil, you sing in your heart. You remember when King Saul, King Saul often was afflicted with evil spirits. Those evil spirits would cause King Saul to be downcast and discouraged. You remember what King Saul did every time that he, be, that he had those evil spirits that came upon him? And he would, King Saul would call for David to bring that harp and, King, and, and David would play that harp. And the Bible says that the evil spirits would be driven away from King Saul. Do you see that? I'll tell you there's great power in singing, brethren. You want to drive the devil away, you start singing. There are very few that have, of you that have ever called me that had major trouble and problems that I didn't say, let's sing. Let's sing. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And what do you think everybody says when they call and they're, they're upset and they're discouraged and despondent and you say, let's sing. What do you think they say? I don't feel like singing. I can't sing right now. I said, well, you can either sing with me on the phone or I'm coming to your house and we're going to sing. So they usually will start singing then. And I'll sing with them and we'll sing together. And, and listen, brethren, singing will drive the devil away. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And one of the best ways that you have by the grace of God to resist the devil is to start singing. That's what he says here. To be filled with the Spirit by singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Sing to God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to mention before I go further about uh, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord. That it's also commanded in the Word of God that we sing in a congregation. That we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody. Watch, watch the wording. Turn forward in your Bibles two pages. Two or three pages. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Brethren, I want, I want you to know that God has commanded you to come into the house of the Lord. That when you enter into the house of God, you're to enter into the house of God with praise and thanksgiving. You're to be praising God. You're to be singing praises to the Lord. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, a very similar wording to, uh, to Ephesians 5, 19, but it's different. Watch the wording. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, the Word of God says, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Watch the wording now. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now brethren, the only way that I can teach you with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. The only way I can teach you in those songs is by doing it out loud. 
Ephesians 5.19 says, singing make melody in your heart. Some people say, well, that's only in your heart. Don't sing out loud. Colossians 3.16 plugs up that hole and it says you're to teach and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. When you're singing to the Lord, I want you to know, brethren, all these little children in the church, one of the first things, one of the easiest ways for them to begin to learn the truth of God's Word is for them to sing psalms. You need to Teach them songs every day. Teach them. I know a lot of you have done that. Those children that listen to those songs over and over, they get in the car and you've got music playing. You're teaching them in songs and hymns and psalms and spiritual songs. When they hear those songs over and over, did you know most of those songs will be with them the rest of their lives? One of the first songs that we ever sang when I was a little child at church camp, we would always sing, This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Do you remember singing that song? Well, that came right out of the Word of God. This is the day. And I'll tell you, brethren, one time I, I worked with a young man for three or four years, and I picked him up most every morning before school, and I would... Uh, we would, every time he would get in the car, he would be kind of grumpy. And, and I'd say, let's sing. We're fixing to sing. And every morning we'd sing, this is the day, and then we'd do it in parts. You know how we used to do it in parts? I'd sing, and then he would repeat it. I would sing, and then he would repeat it. I'm telling you, brethren, I've been with people that could not talk to anyone. They didn't know anyone, but you can start singing Amazing Grace, and they'll begin to open their mouth and begin to sing Amazing Grace. It's down inside of them. People will remember songs longer than they will remember scriptures that they memorize. There's something about singing that becomes a part of our mind and our soul. And if we're singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord, if we're, if we're teaching and admonishing one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, I'll tell you, brethren, we're going to drive the devil away. Sometimes I come to the house of God and I feel, I don't feel right. But I'll tell you, we begin to sing the songs of Zion. We begin to lift up our voices and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And as I begin to sing those songs, and as I think about the words and the truth that are expressed in those songs, I'm lifted up. What Daddy used to say is, it primed his pump. To hear the people of God singing in the Spirit and singing with understanding. And brethren, that helps us to drive the devil away and it helps us to be filled with the Spirit of God when we will sing like the Word of God tells us to sing. So you sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord, but you also teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Go with me back to the uh, Old Testament very quickly. Go back to Psalm 81 very quickly. Psalm 81 and verse 1. You go on and read the book of Psalms and you're going to be filled with the Spirit of God. These are some of the Psalms that we ought to be singing. Psalm 81 and verse 1. The Word of God says, Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Two of the greatest singers I've ever known in my life could not carry a tune in a bucket. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You wouldn't dare ask them to get up here and sing a solo, though one of them did sing a solo one time. And, and uh, that was my daddy and, and, and another man that I know that was my best friend I ever had, Tommy Daniel in Thomaston. And uh, Daddy and Brother Tommy, they couldn't hit the right notes. They weren't there to hit the right notes. They were there to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And that's what Daddy would sometimes say is, I can't sing like y'all can sing. I can't hit all the right notes. I can't sing one particular uh, way and, 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 and in tune with somebody else. But brethren, he would sing to the power and glory of God to, with every fiber of his being. 
And Tommy Daniel was the same way. He would leave the singing at church at Flint River. And the windows of that church would almost shatter. Because he would sing so loud. And I'll tell you brethren. It would cause all the people in the congregation. It would encourage them to sing loud. I'm thankful to God for Brother David. And for the way that he can lead the singing. And sing. And put everything he's got into it. I'll tell you brethren. We ought to be singing just as hard as we can. To the glory of God. Because David's heart's weak sometimes. Well, if he dies singing, it's all right. And if I die preaching, it's all right. We as a people of God, we need to put everything we've got, every ounce we've got, into worshiping God. And one of the best ways to worship God is in singing and making a joyful noise unto the Lord. I pray that God will help all of us this morning to understand you want to get rid of the devil in your heart, your mind, and your soul. You start singing and you'll be filled with the Spirit of God. Sing and making melody in your heart. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Turn to Psalm 95 very quickly. Psalm 95. Look at verse 1 to begin with. In Psalm 95 beginning in verse 1 again. The Word of God is emphasizing the importance of singing. All the Psalms do that. But I just want to notice in Psalm 95, beginning in verse 1, where God says, Oh, come! What did David say earlier? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, one of the main reasons I'm glad when we come to the house of God is to join together with my brothers and sisters in Christ and us sing and make a joyful noise to the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And so the word of God says in Psalm 95 verse 1, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. That's who we're singing to, brethren. We're not here to perform. Let, let me emphasize that again. We are not here to perform. I have been a few times in my life, I've seen people that got up to, to sing and they were there to perform. And they wanted people to applaud for what they did. They were there to entertain. I'll tell you brethren, we're not here to give glory to a person because they can sing. We're not here for a person to... to uh, Boast about what they can do. We're not here for a person to get up and sing so they can get glory. If they're there to get glory themselves, they need to sit down. In fact, if you're, the, if you're here to get glory, you need to fall on your knees and ask God to forgive you. We need to sing to the Lord. But listen, brethren, it, it just irks me when people want to perform. Doesn't matter if it's performing preaching or performing singing or performing praying. If you're praying to be heard of men, you need to shut your mouth. If I'm here to, to entertain you, if I'm here uh, to get glory for preaching the word of God, I need to sit down and shut up. We need to sing. We need to, the scripture says here in Psalm 95 verse 1, O oh, come! Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our sal salvation. Let us come. You see, he keeps talking about come. Let us come before his presence with, with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto the Lord with psalms. Here's the reason why in verse 3. For the Lord... For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Verse 6 says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of, the, of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Brethren, we've got a multitude of reasons to be praising the Lord in singing. And one of the wonder, most wonderful things is we're his people. We're his people. We belong to God. We're his people and we're the sheep of his pasture. What does he say in Psalm 100 that you know by heart? You know all those verses. Psalm 100, just listen to the verse, first two verses. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. You want to get into the presence of God? What does he tell you to do? Amen. Come before his presence with singing. You start singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. And there's something that's going to leave. And what is it that's going to leave? It'll drive the devil away. And what is it that you're going to feel? You're going to be filled, 
filled with the Spirit of God. Ephesians 5.18 says, Be not drunk with wine where it is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. There's a lot of different reasons to sing. A lot of different reasons to praise the Lord. You know, I think the most important reason is that God has saved us from our sins. Jesus Christ, God the Father, sent His only begotten Son down into the earth to save us from our sins. Now, I love everybody in this congregation. I love everybody in this congregation. But I'll tell you this. It'd be mighty hard for me to give up my son for all of you together. Do you understand what I'm saying? Our Heavenly Father sent His only begotten Son down into the earth. And see, I view you as very godly people. But God sent Jesus into the world to save sinners. Ungodly, unworthy heathens. And God has saved us from our sins. Amen. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. There's another song. You want to sing? Sing Amazing Grace. Now, here's another reason to sing. Besides all the blessings that we have, and, and besides the fact that He saved us from our sins, did you know that God gives us victories over and over in our lives? God saves us from many different things. Do you know the only reason? Now we've mentioned several that have the virus today. Do you know the only reason that you don't, if you don't, and you may have it, but you don't know it yet. The only reason you don't have the virus is because God has a hedge about you. That's the only reason. The only reason I don't have the virus is not because I wash my hands enough or wash my face enough or wear a mask enough or stay far enough away from people. The only reason that you don't have that virus, that coronavirus, is because God has protected you that thus far. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't care about those that have it. I'll tell you, brethren, God sends things into our lives as a test of our faith many times. And you and I as a people of God... We're going to have to have suffering in this world. But every time we're suffering, we still ought to praise the Lord and give glory to God and sing songs and worship Him. Children of Israel came out of Egypt and they came through the Red Sea. How did they get through the Red Sea? What kept them from being killed by the Egyptian army? The Egyptian army was behind them. Red Sea was in front of them. No way for them to save themselves. But I'll tell you what God did. God opened up the waters. And when God opened up, opened up the waters of the Red Sea, the children of Israel marched through on dry ground. And when they got to the other side, and then the Egyptian army was down in that sea, the waters closed up on top of the Egyptian army, and they were killed. Who did that? God did that. What did the children of Israel do to save themselves? They just did what God said, and that's go forward. But when they got on the other side, and God had given them a great victory, the Word of God says they sang. They sang. Why would they be singing? They were happy. They were thankful, and they sang to the Lord. Look at that in your Bibles in Exodus. Back up in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15. I'm not going to read this. You go home and read Exodus chapters 14 and 15. You'll read about how glorious and mighty our God is. Not just how He was. God still is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God has the same power. I saw one of the biggest miracles of my life three years ago when we had the last presidential election. And I'm praying for the same thing to happen this year. This, this year. But if it doesn't, I want you to know, I want you to know, God's still on His throne. God's still on His throne. God's still in control. All the kingdoms of this world, they come under the dominion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm praying fervently for God to bless us, to even have a better Congress than we've ever had before. Amen. I'm praying for God to give us people that truly love God and despise abortion and despise homosexuality and people that will stand up 
for the principles upon which our nation was founded. I'm praying fervently for that and I want you to pray for that. But I don't want you to get discouraged and despondent no matter what happens in this world. God is still on his throne. Our king still reigns. Our God reigns. Exodus chapter 15. Here they are now. They've just come through the Red Sea in chapter 14. Chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation he is my God and I will prepare him an habitation my father's God and I will exalt him the Lord is a man of war the Lord is his name and then they sang this song you go home and you go home and read I'm not going to read it out loud to you but it's a beautiful song they were singing why because God gave them a victory I'll tell you, brethren, we, as God gives you and me victories, we need to sing and give glory to God. You've had victories in your life this past week, and you need to be singing and giving glory to God for it. The only thing that keeps you from giving up, the only keep, thing that keeps you going, is the grace of God. You're not going to make it through this next week without the grace of God. No matter what happens during this coming week, God's grace is sufficient for you. And God's grace is sufficient for me. And we ought to sing and glorify God for his amazing grace. Now this is an example of them singing after the victory. You got that? In Exodus 15. They got the victory and they sang. But I want you to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And I want you to see the children of God singing before the victory. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 20. The children of Israel. Judah is being surrounded. By the Moabites and the Ammonites. Jehoshaphat and Judah didn't know what to do. Except they knew what to do. When I say they didn't know what to do. They said we don't know what to do. Nevertheless our eyes are upon thee. Look at verse 12. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 12. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against, against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. See, they didn't know what to do except keep their eyes on the Lord. That's all you need to know what to do. And then you come down to verses 21 and 22. The word of God says, and when he had consulted with the people he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army where were the where were the singers in front of the army I'll tell you brethren if you're singing in the spirit and singing with understanding you can get right in front of the army you can face the devil head on and so the word of God says here that they they sang uh, they went before the army and say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. What caused the victory in this battle? The singers that went before the army, that's what caused the victory. That was what God told them to do. Not what I would have recommended. That's not what anybody would have recommended. But that's what God told them to do. And they did it. And God gave them the victory. To all those that overcome the devil. To all those who overcome the devil. And we overcome him. Have to overcome him many times. Did you have to overcome him? Did you have to fight against the devil this past week? If you weren't fighting against him, he's already got you. We've got reason to fight against the devil every day of our lives. Now I want you to read what the word of God says about those that overcome the devil. We'll close in Revelation. Revelation chapter 15. Look at Revelation chapter 15 verses 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 15 verses 2 and 3. The word of God says in Revelation chapter 15 verse 2. 
And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Now they've already gotten the victory. Did you follow that? They've gotten the victory. Verse 3 says, And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. So those that, those that had the victory in the Exodus chapter 15, they sang the song of Moses. Those that got the victory in Revelation chapter 15, the word of God says they <coughs> sang the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. I want us to praise God from whom all blessings flow every day of our lives. I want us to have a victory over the devil. I want us to be filled with the Spirit. I don't want anybody to be discouraged and despondent. I don't want any child of God to feel like there's no hope. I don't care what the problems are. I don't care what the troubles are. May God help us to know and understand that God is on His throne. And we have every reason in the world to be praising God in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And if you want to be filled with the Spirit of God, instead of being filled with fear, then you're going to have to be singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. May God help us is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen.